how many projects do you think I made in 2023? Because we're going to go through all of them. So pop your guesses into the comments, watch the video and see if you got it right at the end. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. As ever you can find me over on Instagram at the House of Langford and at Overall Sews. I'm also on Ravelry at Mad X Stitcher. And seeing as we're now into January, it's time that I do my yearly roundup. So time to whip out the book. <laughs> so for this sort of episode, I like to have a look back at everything I've made over the year, pick out my favourites from each month of the year and just genuinely have a chat about the good and the bad <laughs> um yeah it's it's just kind of like a little just a little review it's a review of the year basically um what i got up to um going through my tracking lists and setting up plans for 2024 so actually before we do anything we're going to look at the board that I created at the beginning of 2023 with my plans of things I wanted to do or achieve in the year. Now, there were seven things on here. Nope, there were eight things. Two of them have already been wiped off throughout the year. But I was going to do a sort of like a mini check-in in the middle of the year and I completely forgot about it. So it just got left to now. But these were the six left on my board now I've not done much knitting so the top two are still there but I have finished my sunshine beret and I just need to write the pattern up so that goes this is where I find out that the pen's been on here so long it won't actually rub off the board there we go um next one was a snowflake beret I actually made the pattern and got that up on the channel I think last year so um I wanted to make another one in two different colours. So that's why I rubbed off the sunshine because I did do my two coloured version. I just need to write up the instructions for it. Um, the last two on here are Christmas hat and Tunisian crochet. Now, I did make a Christmas hat. I made that in the summer so that can come off. I used yarn from Siobhan's Crafts Christmas hamper. And made the all of a wall hat, all of a well hat by Robin, who is a crafty bird. Is it a crafty bird? Yes. <laughs> um, the last one is Tunisian crochet. Now, I haven't finished anything Tunisian based, but I have done more Tunisian crochet this year, so I am going to rub that off as well. And I know I'm going to need to rub everything off. And rewrite because it's going to be dried um but yeah so i'm left with three on my targets from 2023 so let's get into the book okay so at the beginning of 2023 i started off the channel with 492 subscribers and 173 videos i have since grown to 694 subscribers so that's over 200 more subscribers so hi everyone if you're new here and hi to all my existing subscribers as well um that's incredible that really is incredible i am so humbled that you all want to be here and listen to what i ramble on about each month <laughs> um yeah it's been fun having you. I hope you've been, been enjoying the content and will continue to grow this channel. So, yeah, let's continue. Um, so, yes, I started with 173 videos. Now, I haven't actually counted up how many I have in total now. I think it was 200 and something. That seems like quite a lot because some of them are now shorts. But in terms of full-length videos, like full whip videos, we'll have a very quick count up and see how many we have now. Okay, quick maths tells me that I have had 232 videos by the end of 2023 with me adding 59 last year. <laughs> so I think that's probably down to me doing more over Vlogmas. I've had my Glasgow vlogs as well because that's been a bit of an exciting adventure and 
I've done more over like the holidays and stuff like that as well. I haven't done any tutorials this year, I don't think. So I'm wondering whether that will be a target for this month to create some new tutorials. It would definitely be a target for um, for this month, for this year. It would definitely be a target for 2025 because I'll have a new space to work in. Um, but yeah. I mean, I could do it. I could do it this year, can I? When I really think about it. Anyway. More on that to come. You'll have to watch throughout the year to see what happens there. Um, anyway, so 232 videos from Matt Quick Mouse. It's probably different on my channel, um, but I'll have another look later, I guess. So I also had four, five, six, seven shorts, and I made five posts using the community tab. I've not used that before. So I've been trying to add updates in there. Things like letting you know when um, videos are coming out and just little things like that really. And a bit of behind the scenes of what's going on. So I'm going to continue to use that. I'll probably post maybe a couple of times a month. It's not going to be a complete overload. Um, but yeah, so hopefully that's all helping. Um, so let's move into our finishes for this month and show, uh, for this year keep saying month because I'm so used to doing monthly podcasts but once a year I do a yearly review <laughs> so in January I made four things two of which were projects from the previous year well three of which were projects from the previous year but two were large blankets so what I'll do I'll scoot over and I'll pop up pictures of my favorites from each month I think um some months have more than one favorite most of the time there's one though. So my favourite make from 2023's January was actually the Magic Carpet Throw and I still have it. I love this blanket and I'm so glad that I finished it as well. So the very first time I did Mosaic Crochet was the 2020 Advent Cow from Crochet Society and when I saw this in the magazine I immediately wanted to do it but it took me a little while to actually get all the magazines and then sort out what yarn I was going to use and then make a start on it. So it took me a little bit longer but I really enjoyed working on it and I'm so glad that I finished it because I use it all the time. And I still have yarn left over as well even though I've used bits in other projects. So yeah, I love Mosaic Crochet. It's, it, uh, that particular project has set off my love for the, for the technique and you'll notice as we go through the year that there's been a lot of mosaic going on and there is even a mosaic following me into 2024 as well. So moving into February, I had two finishes in February, one of which was a new pattern that I'm actually going to write up or I have written it up, I just need to get it sorted really. <laughs> um, and that was the emojis that I was designing. I did two in the end um so i need to get that sorted out but my favorite make of the month was the hearts baby blanket that i made and i then sent that off to my cousin um who had a baby i think the month after i can't actually remember but yes i do like that pattern i think that's the second one i've made now yeah and i really enjoy that pattern so the next month was march and I had three projects finished, one of which was the emoji, uh, one of the emoji pieces. Um, I made a cardigan. Now, I use super chunky yarn though, and I'm not fond of that project actually. I am very tempted to rip it all back and get my mum to knit me a jumper because that was the main intention for it. And I'm regretting not getting it knit up. I had planned to do it myself, but. We know what happens when I plan to knit. <laughs> Basically, I don't end up doing it. <laughs> um, so yeah, my favourite make is actually the little chick basket that I made for Easter. And then I think I subsequently put it away with my Easter decorations and then forgot about it. And then when I was trying to find it, I couldn't find it because I didn't remember putting it in with the decorations. But yes, it's very cute and would definitely make a cute gift as well if you were to make a few and put some sweets in them or something um, and give them to children for 
Easter. Next up is April and I have four finishes from April. It's also the time when I did my 24 hour crochet challenge and I am looking to bring that back for 2024. I just don't know when yet. I haven't planned when that's going to take place. So my favourite make is actually a bag that I hand painted <laughs> um, for April. I was running a little workshop at work and wanted to do something a little bit different so I painted a tote bag with a sheep on the front <laughs> and the words yarn stash and actually that is one of my favourite project bags. I actually have, um, I do have yarn in it so all the yarn I was using for my good vibrations dress was used was held in that bag that's what kept it all together um and i still have the rest of that yarn in that bag moving on to may and i had two finishes in may one of which was the coronation blanket i was a few days late finishing it so it wasn't in time for the coronation however i enjoyed working on it and there was a lot going on i learned a few bits as well which is always brilliant for me because there's not I don't find I learn a lot anymore. I feel like I'm a bit of a sponge, so I just do stuff. I've learned quite a lot in the past, so it's nice to try something different every now and then. And that was something I did on that blanket. Um, all the ends have still not been woven in because, just because. <laughs> um, but actually my favorite project from the month of May was the bag that I made, another bag, um, a crochet bag this time, and it has two wooden panels, one front, one back, and it has a DD and d character on it that I really like. So I made it up as I went along, and I was really pleased with it. I actually used that when I went to Comic-Con in October, and yeah, I'm just very proud of that project. <laughs> Next up is June. And I have six finishes for June, one of which was Shoop the Sheep, which is a Heidi Bear's pattern. I absolutely loved making the sheep. I made it with the help of some other people, or some customers at the yarn shop, my local yarn shop. And everybody made some different African flower shapes, so I just put them all together. I had made all of the solid coloured pieces, so for the head and his tail and ears i made all of those but put everything together and it was just such a fun project and a nice collaborative project as well all the yarns were different we have no idea what half of them were um most of them came from the yarn shop though and that was kind of the whole point to kind of showcase some of the colors that we have on offer as well as some of the different types of yarn so, for example, there were a couple of sparkly yarns in there. There were some cotton yarns in there as well. And it was just really fun to do. And everyone else got involved with it. And that was the whole point. So, yeah, that was one of my favourite makes from June. The other one, as I mentioned earlier, is the Good Vibrations dress. I have not made a dress before in crochet or knit. And... I've sewn dresses, but not with yarn. So to make something that I could then wear to a craft festival really, really did put a smile on my face. And I have worn it a few times now. I need to um, sew up the underarm a little bit more because it's dropped where it got wet in the rain and it's the cotton is quite weighted. So, but I absolutely love that dress. And I got so many compliments on it and it just makes me smile. <laughs> Next up is July. I have four finishes from July, two of which are the same project, just different colourways. So I made two rainforest retreat shawls, one in neutrals and one in rainbow. <laughs> so the rainbow one is my one and the neutrals one was for a friend. Um... The rainbow uses up leftovers from the Good Vibrations dress, but I did have to top it up a little bit because I wanted to try and keep the colours in blocks. And I think I ended up with six or seven colours in that dress, in the shawl, from the dress. So 
yeah I used up quite a lot of yarn <laughs> but I absolutely love that shawl and everyone else loves it too because it's so happy and it's enormous as well my tension for that particular shawl just seemed to be really loose but I think it's a tension in general for cotton yarn with me because it slides across my hands so quickly and easily my tension just seems to be looser but that's okay there's something I know about now and I can arrange to either change up my hook size or sort up my tension so yeah <laughs> July was also the month where I started working on some more toft projects I actually made the badger for my husband um I had previously made the panda which sits here and I wanted to make my husband a badger for our anniversary because the anniversary for year four is wool so that's what I made for him and it now sits in his bedroom in Glasgow <laughs> um but the panda will join the badger at some point so moving into August then so August is my summer holiday so I have six weeks off work and I took just over a week in Glasgow I made so much progress on some of my projects I pretty much almost finished the ho 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 whilst I was there I just needed to do the border when I came back um, I made a Christmas hat while I was there, which is the All of a Well hat, using the Christmas yarn. Which is the one I ticked off of my whipboard list. So, I also made my Sunshine Beret in two colours there as well. Which is one of my um, favourite makes for August. So the Sunshine Beret in the two colours. The yarn I used was Yarn Whisperer in Sunshine and Berry Compote. I absolutely love it. The colours are just so bright and fun. It's one of my favourite makes ever, I think. And it's my own pattern. <laughs> um, the other favourite make I have for August, because there's so many of them, is the Ho 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 Cow. Now, I started it in the September. The week it came out, I started that pattern. I did part one, which is the... Father Christmases and then the very small bar of snowflakes and I took it to the yarn shop to show everybody and to see if they wanted to have a go at mosaic crochet and then everyone in that group immediately wanted to make it so I stopped doing mine and helped everyone else do theirs and it didn't get touched again until I went to Glasgow in May so I took it with me then um, but I only did one section, I think, in Glasgow at that point. And then I was working on it over June. And then when I got to the end of July and took it with me again, I was just like, I need to finish it. I really need to finish it. And I did. And I'm very happy with it. I've been using it all over Christmas, the whole of December. And yeah, I just love it. Absolutely love it. Um, yeah, this is this is what I mean by lots of lots of mosaic crochet. <laughs> what I will say about August actually is that I also used quite a lot of chenille yarn, which is the fluffy fluffy yarn, and I made so many toys. I made manta rays I made dinosaurs I made a strawberry I made some polar bears I didn't make the polar bears in a plushy yarn but I did make three polar bears um yeah I just seem to get really caught up in making everything in plushy yarn and it's so soft and squishy next up is September now despite me going back to work in September as a teacher um I made 17 things so I actually finished bordering the Lucky Puppy Blanket, which was my third mosaic crochet blanket of the year. Um, I originally did that as a test piece in, it was released I think the very first day of June. So I finished the main crochet of it, but it needed a border. So I finished that in September. I made the Manta Rays that I mentioned earlier. I made a Granny Shawl, which is actually so much fun 
um, that was for a colleague of mine at work. I started it when we went to the zoo on a trip in June, end of June, and just continued with it and finished that off in September for her. And it just uses two rainbow cakes, so it's a really nice stash buster. It was easy to work on on the bus to the zoo, and yeah, I made a granny shawl. And I've only made two. Both of them have been rainbow themed. <laughs> one uses advent yarn and one uses rainbow cakes. I also, for the first time ever, made a wire crown. So every year I try and enter the Orsett show, they have categories for hobbies and handicrafts. And one of them is a hair fascinator or a hat. And then you also have jewellery, hard materials, soft materials, Christmas decorations, blankets, crochet, knitting, everything everything um and i made a crown <laughs> now i no longer have it because i actually sold it um i think i sold it at the christmas market in Bellarico at the very beginning of december but yeah i loved it it's just so fun it's not, actually it's not the first crown i've made i have made another one before i made one based on um elsa's crown from frozen for my friend's daughter so yeah, I lied. That's the second crown I've made. <laughs> but it's just nice and sparkly. It had rainbow gems, uh, rainbow stones in it. And it was just fun. Yeah. yeah. I love working with wire. But I don't... My wrists don't like it anymore. <laughs> Moving into October then. And I made eight items. Um, I actually... When I went back through my list, I realised I hadn't put on there um, any of the rainbow um decorations that i made for my work colleagues i have made at least four of them now yeah I've, i'm sure i've made at least four of them so they were around october november time um but what i also did was make a pouch that hung on a belt so that i could wear that to comic-con i did that in aran yarn so it took a considerably less amount of time to work up than dk and i took that had my phone in it for the day so it was always on my hip that was really easy quick make to do and made it up as i went along because i couldn't find anything out there that was crocheted i could only find sewn pieces on the sewing machine and i didn't have time to do that um or the space to get everything out for it so i also made five pumpkins and another rainforest retreat shawl this time it was in purple blue and silver which is quite a nice variegation so i love the rainforest retreat shawls i just really do um the pattern is so intuitive and easy to read everyone seems to get one of the rows wrong though and i don't understand how because I just follow the pattern and I do it fine. I don't have any issues with it. But I think it's because one of the stitch counts is out. But I don't look at the stitch count unless I have an issue. So I just follow the pattern. But I love it. I've made three now and I can see myself making more in the future if people wanted a gift of some sort. Because I can knock one up in a week. <laughs> yeah. That's how intuitive it is. I just kept going. Again, that's another shawl that I don't have. That, was, again, was for a friend. And they love it. So, yeah, I'm very happy about that. <laughs> November, then, I have nine finishes. I made four Dalmatians. Three gingerbread baubles. I made a baby blanket using squares. So, leftover yarn from 2022's advent blanket from crochet society i used all the leftovers from that i think i have like four or five squares left over completely but yeah i made a baby blanket i need to send that off to my friend actually because it's all boxed up and ready to go but just need to get to a post office um but my favorite make for the month of november is actually my quacker i love the quacker 
I really do. It was so fun to make. I started it in Glasgow, so I think I made the body and the headwaters in Glasgow and then had to make everything else when I came back um, over the summer. Was it the summer? No, I think I did this in October. I started it in October when I was in Glasgow. But yeah, I absolutely and just look at his mane. Yeah, so that is my favourite make for November and what has really, really kicked off my love for Toft now as well because they're just adorable. And lastly, we have December. Now, I've just filmed my monthly roundup for December, which is why I kept saying monthly. <laughs> um, but yes, I made so many things, so many things, and they were all Christmassy related. <laughs> Um, let me quickly check. 12 items in December. And I made a gingerbread man, which I absolutely love. It's just so cute. And I'm so glad I redid it in the 2.5 hook instead of the 4 mil hook. You'll have to check my December roundup to see what I mean in terms of size difference. And... Like, one of them's floppy and one of them's not, because one uses the right hook and one uses the wrong hook. But, yeah, <laughs> it's still one of my favourite makes. Um, I also made the free dolls, the mini dolls, for the Toft Advent. Again, one of my favourites. The fact that there are free characters, I absolutely love it. And I learned new things. I crocheted with ribbon. I crocheted with chain. Never knew I could do that. I crocheted with tool to make a tutu. And I put wire into the dolls so that they can be poseable. None of that I'd done before. So this was a real nice project or series of mini, that's a mini, three mini projects um, to learn new things throughout the month of December. And I absolutely love them. I don't want to put them away. I want them to stay out forever and on display, but they are Christmas related, so I need to get a nice box that I can put all my lovely Christmas decorations in and get it stored away safely. I also made a gingerbread house. Again, I love this gingerbread house. You have no idea how much I love this gingerbread house. I said it so much on my roundup, but yeah. I love the gingerbread house. It's so fun. The fact that you can lift the lid off and fill it with sweets and stuff. What's not to love? And the very last thing I did that I absolutely love is my Christmas jumper mug cozy, which will most definitely come out every year um, for Christmas. So, and it was a group project as well, in a way. We did it as a secret Santa, but a not so secret Santa. Um, where all of my friends were given yarn at random so no one knew what colours they were getting and we all got the pattern and made our own version of this mug cozy and it is just the cutest thing <laughs> so that is my roundup of the year and everything I have made now I'm going to do a very quick tally of how many items I made throughout the year just in comparison to the previous year, because I feel like I need to. <laughs> right, I've had a, cat, a tally up, and last year, so 2022, I made, I think it was 78, 78 projects. Now, this year, my Ravelry says I have 59 projects for... 2023 however some of those project pages are for multiple items and some pieces aren't crochet or knit related so drum roll i have 88 items for 2023 yep um <laughs> 
So there were quite some large items as well. There's quite a few blankets that were finished this year and I think I've surprised myself in that. The fact that I did the 24 hour crochet challenge helped me work out how long it takes me to do certain things and as well as December making so many items over a period of time that normally I'm quite stressed out and it's the rundown to the end of the school term and the same with September that's the first term back and I made so many items admittedly some of them are quite small but each project is a different item it's a finished make and actually a lot of the items I made in September I have sold so I feel like I need to add crochet into my stalls more and I now have a huge bag and a box of crochet items that I can sell so I am going to be looking to make more I think over the summer definitely but also so I can take them to Glasgow with me and yeah so this last year 2023 had a lot of challenges my husband got a new job in Glasgow School of Art in May and so we've been backwards and forwards up and down the country all year and it has taken its toll however things are changing in 2024 it's going to be another tricky year because we're still between two places but it's going to be the year where we do all the work and we can actually settle down for 2025 um, and then I can crochet to my heart's content <laughs> no so yeah it's going to be another tricky year but these challenges are different to last year's challenges and I'm really excited for them so come along on the journey with me put your bets in now how many items do you think I will make for 2024 for knowing that things are changing other people have kind of guessed it around the channel but um yeah <laughs> that is what we did what i did for 2023 and how the channel has grown um i can also tell you that i have watched a total of 22 films and i have watched four of them twice so the year before we watched quite a few films actually and I think because we're in two different places normally my husband would put the TV on, find a, a movie or put a DVD on and that's how the tracking of the films we've watched came about but because we're not together all the time anymore that's kind of taken a step back and actually a lot of these films have been watched when we've been together. I don't often watch movies on my own because I watch a lot of YouTube and I watch a lot of D&D &D. so yeah it's just a nice nice thing to track I think um shows how much TV time we actually have together but it's also time where we just sit and actually be in each other's company and relax rather than having conversations or trying to do stuff that is our chill time um so I will continue to track that in the new year but we started the year with 27 whips from 2022 and I finished the year with less whips than I started with and that's all that matters to me. So that is the end of 2023 roundup and this book is now full. So I have set up my new one which is this one. It's got a bit of gold on it which I really like and yeah so I haven't done a title page yet but I have done a goals page just random goals really things that I know need to be done for this year so it's not necessarily goals it's just things I definitely have to do this year um I have my YouTube stats again so we ended the year on 694 um subscribers I've written here 235 videos because that's what it says on my YouTube channel. So, yeah. And 10 posts. Um, so I will keep track of that throughout the year. 
I then have my films list. We've already watched five-ish movies. I don't think I watched the end of the first one and we missed the very beginning of the second one. So, And I've already got two finishes for January for 2024. So that, and it's a bit bigger this book as well, which means I can do a few more years um, than I have done before. I started this book in 2020. 2020 so yeah now we started in 2020 in terms of YouTube subscribers did I track it I did this shows you how far we've come in three four years because I started 2020 with 85 subscribers in three years, we've actually hit 700. Yeah, we're just over three years. We've hit 700 subscribers. So thank you so much for being here. And as always, I don't say it on the channel very often, but if you do like the content, please hit like, please hit subscribe. And as always, I love hearing your comments as well and seeing what you thought of what I've been up to. So... Yeah, I started with 12 videos and I'm well over 200 now. And I think that shows that I'm enjoying what I'm doing and putting this content out for you. So I'm going to wrap this up because the light is dimming rapidly. And yeah, I'm looking forward to my new challenges for 2024. Remember, put your bets in the comments of how many projects you think I'm going to get done. Because I'd love to know. And I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye.